morning, everybody. We're in Saskatoon. delivering these dumps today just down the street and get them off my trailer and call in and find out what's going on next stayed here at the Flying J it was a good night <sighs> now it's time to get going again that fresh air feels great I'm so glad that there's no snow out here I better not have just jinxed it I better not have just jinxed it shoot you ever wake up in your truck and you're like, what is going on? Where am I? What city am I in? Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you are. Hi. All right. So let's get these trailer, uh, these uh, truck dumps. What are they called again? Dump bodies. Let's get these dump bodies. That sounds bad when you say that, dump bodies. Let's just let's get these things off my trailer. They've been weighing me down for a few days. I don't want them anymore. Had my fun with them. I'm going to bring them to someone else so they can have them. I want to put something else on there. And just like that, snap of the fingers and we're back at Flying J. Nothing left, just my tarps. I need to replace these. These are getting pretty thin. I bought a patch kit for them, so I have been patching them. And they're holding up. But I'm thinking probably by next winter I'm going to have to buy a new set of these they're about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for a set so after I make a delivery I take my bill of lading which is my proof of delivery and I scan it into an app called Transflow it's sort of like a, a faxing app it's sort of, it replaces faxes we used to fax these in back in the olden days right now we just use an app on our phone and just literally just take a picture of it Sent, scan it into the app and just sends it over to the office. That way they have my proof of delivery. That means that I delivered it and I have a signature and a printed name and a date on here proving that I did not dump my load in my backyard or in my garage or somewhere else. That I brought it to where it was supposed to be and that they received it in good condition. That lets me off the hook. As soon as I have this signed paper, the load is no longer mine. Now when I go pick up my new load, in Meadow Lake now, as soon as I receive paperwork, as soon as it's on my trailer and I receive paperwork for it and I sign my copy of it, I'm taking responsibility of that load then. That is then my load until I get to the destination where again, we repeat the process. That way it's clear whose responsibility is whose, right? If something happens to the load now, it's not my problem. It's not on my trailer anymore. It's in their yard. They unloaded it. They signed for it. It's their problem now, right? That's why when you unload freight, you always have to make sure that everything is as it should be before you sign it. Because once you sign it, it's yours. And uh, I don't want it back. <laughs> so I just open up this app. I take a, a scanned little picture of it. I send it in that goes to the office. And then that uh, process is done. I do the same thing for uh, uh, paperwork going to customs for going to the U.S. And for going to Canada. I believe we'll be going to the U.S. from here, dipping down there. Uh, so before I go there, I have to let customs know that I'm coming, right? They need to know that I'm coming, that I'm coming in this truck. They need to know what's on my trailer. They need to know where it's going. I'm not allowed to pick up freight in the U.S. and deliver in the U.S. That, that's a common question I've been getting lately. That's a good question. Uh, that's called interstating. A Canadian driver 
cannot pick up freight in the U.S. and deliver it in the U.S. Also, a, an American driver coming up to Canada cannot pick up freight in Canada to deliver in Canada. Like, if you're coming up and you live in Tennessee, you take a load up to Winnipeg, let's say. You deliver your load, and then you pick up another load in Winnipeg that's going to Calgary in Alberta. Very illegal. You can't do that both ways. That way it protects jobs on both sides of the border. If I take a load from, let's say, uh, Fargo, North Dakota to, uh, I don't know, Jackson, Tennessee, well, that's, that's taking a job that was meant for an American truck driver. When I take freight from Canada to the U.S., I must pick up a load that's coming directly back to Canada. Because this is where I'm based. I'm a Canadian citizen. Unless if you're an American citizen, then it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I have to go back and forth each time. So I'll go down to the U.S., come straight back. Sometimes we go pretty far down. We'll go all the way down to Florida or all the way down to San Diego or something. But the load coming back must go directly back to Canada. Maybe we'll deliver to Atlanta, Georgia, and then our reload will be in Tennessee or something or in Texas. Or maybe it'll be a little bit of a, a, a deadhead, a bit of a long deadhead to where we have to pick up a load. But that load has to go back to Canada. That's how it works. So when I let the U.S. Customs know that I'm coming, I use the same app. Uh, I send it into the office. All this does is sends my paperwork into the office. They take care of all those headaches for me. That's why they take a cut off all the rates, right? Because it's uh, uh, that's their job to do that. Otherwise, I would be running under my own rights, my own running rights, and all those headings, headaches would be mine. I'm not quite ready for that in my career. Maybe one day I can... Like, I've always, I'm very happy where I am. I have no desire to go anywhere else or start my own thing right now. But... You don't know what the future holds. If things were to change for the worse and suddenly I'm not happy, I don't see that ever happening. But if it did, you know, I'd consider running under my own running rights, getting my own company. Just even if it's just my truck, maybe I'll hire a couple of drivers. I don't know. But that's a lot of headaches. There's a lot of headaches involved in that with dealing with the brokers, dealing with customs, dealing with customers, uh, finding loads, all the paperwork, chasing after people for money because they don't want to pay you, right? And all this stuff. And... It's a lot of extra headaches added on to it. So uh, I'm glad that the office, we have people in the office that take care of that for me. If I was just a one-man show, I don't know how I would do it. There are people who do it, but it would it would take a lot of extra effort. So I send this paperwork into the, the pe good people in the office, and they take care of that for me. And then they let me know when I'm clear. So yeah, that that part's pretty easy for me. This is this is the hardest part right here. Just gotta just gotta scan this in right. Make sure that it's clearly visible in there, that they can read it. And I go next, I go next, I say send. And wait for it. There it is, confirmation. They give me a little confirmation number and everything to make sure that, it, that I know that it went through. They have that paperwork. This load is now complete. Done. It's off my back. Nothing to do with me anymore, not my problem. It was received in good condition. Now we go get the next one. It's going to be a load of lumber. Like I said, I believe it's going down to the U.S. And then I'll have a load down in the U.S. coming straight back up here. I'm going to go grab a coffee and let's get to trucking.
So we made it. We got this guy waiting in front of me yet. And there's another truck being loaded over there. There's two guys in front of me. That's not bad. They load pretty quick here. I'm not sure if you remember from last time, but last time I was here, this was the place that got me loaded in like five minutes. By the time I pulled in there, I had barely gotten my straps ready and he had already finished everything up and was coming to me with my paperwork. He said, boom, 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 boom. That's what I like to see, employee of the month over here. Employee of the year. Looks like it's the same guy again, he's just giving her. So usually while they load here, I stay in my truck to stay out of their way because they do it fast. And you don't want to get in their way, get run over. So this guy throws it all on my trailer before you can even really collect yourself and get ready. I'm already all ready because I got a couple of guys in front of me this time, but you know, you get your vest on, you pull out your hard hat. Uh, if you need safety glasses, I'm one of the lucky ones, I guess you'd call it. I have glasses, eyeglasses now. So you take a look in my mirror right there, you'll see we are loaded. Nice and quick, nice and easy. Now let's hit the road. We gotta get to Nebraska. I'm here at the scale just before Saskatoon and I had to do a little bit of adjusting. They're closed right now, but I was reading on my gauges that my drives were a little too heavy for the US. We're okay for Canada, but uh, I guess I should have put that one bundle on the back. But I was able to fix it. I slid my fifth wheel forward and that put weight onto my steers. I had lots of room on my steers and now we're legal for the US. It just started raining too, just as I was talking to you guys out there. I'll take it, I'll take the rain over snow. Absolutely. Just means my glasses are gonna get water drops on them. Yay. So yeah, my, uh, I can tell on my drives here, or my PSI gauge, that I was probably just a little over 34,000 pounds for the US. Uh, the scale here is closed, but you can still drive over it. So I came in here to park, and as I was going to the parking spot, I just slowly did a slow roll over the scale, and I realized, yep, I'm at about 34,600 pounds on my drives here, and only like 32,000 on my trailer. I could have put that that lift on the top there at the back. He asked me which one I wanted, and I, I, I told him to put it up front because I want more weight on my drives, right? But the thing was, I was only at 11,000 pounds on my steers. I'm allowed to have at least 12,000 pounds there, depending on what the truck's rated at, about 13.6, I think, max. But anyway, I had room to put it on my steers, so what I did was I, I slid my fifth wheel forward towards the cab as close as I could so that the trailer's still not hitting when I turn, hitting my, tra uh, hitting my truck, and that my mud flap hangers don't catch on the trailer. It's pretty close. It's about that far away, my mud flap hangers, from the trailer. i show you, but now it's raining. I don't want to get my camera all wet out there. But as far forward as I could, I went around again and I rolled over again, slow roll, and I'm at exactly 34,000 pounds. Pretty much exactly. I think it was like 34,050 pounds. So I still got a long ways to go to the US border. What I'm going to do is I'm going to burn off a bunch of fuel so that by the time I get there, I'm, I've burnt off 50 pounds of fuel. And then I've just got to watch how much fuel I use while I'm in the US to keep underneath the max weights for the US of 34,000 pounds on my on my trailer. Oh, my truck here, sorry, my truck, I'm getting my words mixed up. So I looked at my gauges and I'm like, okay, we look good. It's close, but we look good. And when I rolled over here, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm almost like a thousand pounds over. Well, not a thousand, but it was 700 pounds over, or whatever I said. I have to do something. So luckily I always ride with my fifth wheel all the way to the back, all the way to the back, right to the back. That's for if I pull vans and I need that extra space because fifth wheel pin is further back on a van trailer but the step decks we can tighten that gap up and what that does is it transfers weight up the frame of my truck so it transfers it off my drives behind my truck the two axles behind my truck transfers it onto my steer axle in front of my truck now that extra weight that was back there that was gonna make me overweight for the US I'm not overweight for Canada I'm okay to be here but that extra weight that was gonna make me overweight once I cross the border is now sitting on my steer axle and uh, my steer axle is now sitting at about 12,900 pounds. No, not 12, 11,900 pounds. So, so, Trucker Josh, save the day! Hooray! Okay, I'm gonna go down the road. I wanted to shower in Saskatoon, 
<laughs> Let's see how busy it is when we get there. Well, it was a pretty long day, very long day. I used up my entire 16 hour window here in Canada. Now I had to stop for a full 10 hours before I'm legal to cross into the US the next day. Uh, so this is the next day already. I got here, I went straight to sleep. Uh, we made it to Weyburn, Saskatchewan. We drove 1,013 kilometers, so about like 625 miles or so. I ended up having to park on the street in uh, one of the industrial zones here in Weyburn, where the, we are allowed to park. I did research to make sure I'm allowed to park here, but the truck stop here in town was just packed. As far as I know, there's only one truck stop in Weyburn. It's a very small town. It's maybe like a couple of thousand people that live here, so it's not like it's a big city or anything, but they have the one uh, co-op truck stop. And it used to have this huge parking lot where we could seriously park, like 75 trucks. Big parking lot. But then they went and built a grocery store on the parking lot. So all of that parking, oh, and then they put signs up, no trucks, so you can't go and park in there, which makes sense. They got fresh asphalt in there like, for their parking lot for the grocery store. They don't want the big trucks in there wrecking their lot that they just paid a lot of money for. I understand that, okay. But they cut the parking down in Weyburn from, well, I'm gonna say probably close to 100. We probably could have fit 100 trucks in there. Let's say 75 trucks, let's be conservative here. 75 trucks, they cut it down to maybe 15. And it is packed. Like, there's about 15 parking spots and probably about 25 trucks squeezed in there anyway. So they're in every corner all over the place. A couple of guys are blocked in that I saw. So we lost a lot of parking. So I was out of hours. When I stopped here where I am right now, I literally I had one minute left on my entire 16 hour day. I could not go any further. So I'm glad I found this spot. I walked up and down the street and I it is a street you can park on. Didn't have a choice. Parked underneath the street light, and here we are. I made it through the night. So, continue this 